Hello, everybody, and welcome to a video on the Constructed Criticism YouTube channel. I'm Spencer, and I'm doing a celebration video. Um, it's going to be really different, but I just wanted to celebrate. We get 1,500 subscribers, um, and it's something that I'm really proud of. You know, I've spent a lot of time trying to figure out a way to mix podcasting content with, with YouTube content, and I'm, I've I'm really proud of what we've achieved and, you know, the gameplay videos and the, the, all the podcasts and things like that that have changed here. And just everybody that's involved in the network is, it's really cool. You know, this this YouTube channel is actually what pays for those podcasts to have hosting. And so it's it's really cool to be able to support podcasters with free hosting and with software to help them do the things that they uh, want to do uh, to make great content. And, you know, it it it's really exciting to me to have this support and so today we're gonna do something really really different um you know if all you wanted to see is hear me say thank you because it means the world to me you leave now but what we're gonna do today is i'm actually just gonna brew and so the, the rest of this video will probably be edited into whichever deck i decide that i like the most or the deck that i think is the most interesting that i spend the most time on um but i'm just gonna brew decks and then i'm gonna edit the video and kind of see where we end up and so I am really interested in what Historic looks like right now, and I'm just going to do the entire process that I do when I brew a deck from the ground up, so this is from zero, and just kind of see what that process looks like and share it with you, the viewer, because it's something that I've been asked about in the past when I was doing Concerted Criticism. So here we go. Hey, everybody. Before this video, I just want to say something pretty important. I think that pretty often uh, in Magic, for some reason, people who look at decks online get a bad rap, and I'm going to do that during this video. Because there are so many Magic players in the world, when you and somebody else have a, when you have an idea, it's really likely that somebody else has actually had the same idea as you in Magic. And not using what those people are doing as a resource when deck building is a pretty big mistake as far as improving as a player. A really good example of this is like, everybody in the world can think of putting burn spells in a deck and attacking with creatures. It's really not a complicated idea to have. Um, but it's a really effective one, and leveraging resources and then trying to improve upon those things that other people have done is going to make you the best magic player possible. So in this video, we're going to see me looking at decks, and you know, while we're starting from ground zero in the form of I just want to pick a deck that I enjoy and play, it's going to be a little bit different than you might expect. So I'm here to present to you me brewing Bant, Scapeshift, and Historic. Okay, so the first thing that I like to do when brewing a deck is to see if we can find something on the metagame. So let me go ahead. I'm going to check a couple places. First thing we're going to do is go to MTG Goldfish and just see what kind of decks are submitted. Um, I don't think that Goldfish has any kind of historic results to go by. Um, so first thing we're going to do is go to the metagame and we look at... They should have a historic as a button. And I think what you just see is total submitted decks. So Mono White, Blue White Control, Esper, Gruel... Um, so I played a lot of the white deck. It looks like there's some Sultai Midrange, some Grixis Control. Um, and it looks like these decks are all user-submitted decks also. So Mono White being the most popular user-submitted deck. I'm surprised that there's no... Uh, I'm really surprised that there's no, you know, taking turns decks. Let's see if there's a Twitter account uh, for Historic... Or if, let's check Arena deck lists. If you don't listen to Jerry and uh, Jerry and Brian, they're super awesome. Uh, great podcast. Check them out. These cards are unbanned. I wonder if I can look at... I bet I could do this. Say Arena deck lists. Also, if you ever want to tweet these deck lists at me, just tweet them at Arena Mythicast and you can get invited to the show. So, okay, so we gotta search both fully. Uh, arena deck lists. Historic. Latest. This person's gold with this deck. This person's a diamond with mono red. These are all today. Mono red. 
I think this is mono white. No, it's something else. White weenie. Scape shift. Well, the deck that I'm most interested in is actually scape shift uh, with or security fruit. So this is going to be a great starting point that we will reference. So the reason that I'm interested in this specifically, really quick, and why I was wanting to brew scape shift is a couple of reasons. The one of the first ones, of course, is uh, you know I think that having the ability to play something like Shatter the Sky uh, and a bunch of cards that are really good against ground creatures uh, it is just going to be really powerful, a really powerful interaction. So I want to brew Bant Scapeshift here. Um, also, you know, Gruel Aggro is something that's, that's really interesting. So the first thing that we want to do is to remember that we have a Field of the Dead mana base. So what I'm actually going to do... Um, to kind of help me reference what a good mana base looks like, is I'm going to look up Bant Scape Shift in Standard. So it's not that I couldn't build a mana base from scratch, it's just that this makes it a lot easier to uh, kind of look at where a reasonable mana base ended up. And we see Bant Golos. That's not what we're looking for here. Here's one from September of last year. Okay, cool. So we see 20 lands, most of them having a bunch of things like guild gates. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is go Field of the Dead. And I am actually going to start with four. I need to clear my filters, though. Reset. Okay, so... I probably need more than field. Because those cards are going to have... Uh, when it enters the battlefield on it. Why do I have no field that ends in my account anymore? No, I do. Why is why is this red? Do I have to click store of course? Okay. Woo! Scared me, fam. Scared the bejeebers out of me. So if we kind of go back to that deck list, right? Um, it's interesting. I didn't even. I, I was going to talk about fields as if because I thought I had seen that they were playing less than four, but they are, actually are. So, um, one of the things that I like here that they're doing that you wouldn't have had access to in standard is actually Fabled Passage, um, because it is two land drops in a turn. Uh, but you have to make sure that you play enough basics for it, obviously. Um, but you also need to make sure that you have enough basics for Securitas Root. One of the things that it looks like this deck is doing is playing the Guild Gates for Root. I think that's really, really important, is it lets you have lands that it usually is the one to get. Um, so I really like that about this list. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, next thing we want to do is build our base. I think... Fairy is going to be really, really important here. I think Krasis is something that I want. At least three of those. Uh, definitely want Grazer. We're going to start with four. We'll cut stuff like Grazer later. Um, but I'm planning to play Elvish Rejuvenator. And so with this many three drops, it's possible that I actually do want Grazer over other stuff. Um, I'm going to put in Growth Spiral. And obviously we can cut cards later um, if we end up not wanting this many Explorer effects. Euro. Escape Shift. And then let's just look at Destroy All Creatures. Okay, so options are uh, Time Wipe, Roam Cloak Giant, plan uh, probably don't want Flanner Cleansing, um, Cleansing Nova is not, I don't know that we want that either. So we have the option of Shatter the Sky, it's just kind of a clean 4 mana 1, and uh, Time Wipe is another one that we might want to consider. I'm actually going to start with 3 Shatter, 1 Time Wipe. 
Okay, so we're already at 53 cards. Um, I'm going to build our mana base because I don't think we're playing enough lands yet. So I'm going to turn off the... So I'm going to turn off suggested lands. And let's fix our... Let's go to something prettier here. So we know we're going to want two planes, and we know we're going to want at least two forests. So if we're... Depending on how many basics we play, we need to start off with this as a one of this is a two of and then forest forest mm, do i want that one though no we'll go here all right the other thing that we know that we're going to want probably is breeding pool and temple garden i'm going to start off with two of each um do we want Castle Garenbrig? That's an interesting question. It is a land that can... Uh, oh, wait. We don't have enough force, though. It is a, la a different named land, so I kind of like that. Uh, Sunpow Grove. Hinterland Harbor. Let's get the gates in there. What art do I want here? This is important. You have to care about your art when you're... When you're making something yourself, you should care about that kind of stuff. Or if you don't care, don't care. It doesn't. It doesn't really matter. I'm just saying I care. Okay, so we are at 20 lands without Fable Passage, and I think without Field of Ruin. Which I definitely think we want one of those. Also, that art is sweet, so we're gonna do that. Um. I'm going to see if we can fit in a blast zone. It's possible that that's incorrect. Castle Fantress. Okay, what are we at now on land? So now we're at 25. So let's kind of go back and look at what mana bases we're doing. So we see temples and gain life lands. So we still need to add Fable Passage. Oh, no, we don't. We don't need a Fable Passage. I wish I could see that. This deck's going to be hard to look at lands for. We could just move like this while we brew, though. Actually, it might work. Okay. So, I want... I want... I'm thinking of deciding if I want another island. Um, let's look at the mana base of this list that went on that 12-2 run. It is playing one temple there, one temple there. Are we just going to end up on the same mana base? Should I have just looked at this? Yeah, we are. We're actually going to end up probably on the exact same mana base. See? Net decking happens for a reason. <laughs> it makes things faster. We don't need three planes, though. So, temple. Just do one of each to start with. And that puts us at 27 lands. I want more lands than that for sure. So that means that we have a spot. That means that this person is also probably only playing 27 lands. No, actually, I see that the difference is, is that they're playing a Glacial Fortress. Which actually makes sense for having the best mana possible. This is a lot of tap potential tap lands. Alright, so now that we have our mana base complete, I'm going to switch back to here. Um, we don't need to look at that again for a while. So now I kind of just want to look at things that are options here. Um, I already know for sure that I don't want this many explore effects. Uh, so we can assume that some of those are going to get cut. And I just want to like kind of think about my deck. Like what is it trying to do here? So obviously I'm pretty happy with Teferi plus this stuff. Now the question becomes, do I need other stuff? We know Gruul is a deck in this format. We know Mono Red's a deck in this format. Like... Do I need more stuff that gains life, for example? Uh, do I need... Is something like... Tamiyo something that I would want? I'm going to I'm gonna put a Tamiyo in there. Uh, you know, Nissa is something that I could consider. It's possible that I just actually want more Hydroid Crisis. It's also possible that, you know, this deck is better uh, as a five-color deck and playing something else. Uh, you know, like, a, like Golos. Is that something to consider? Because it doesn't have to be banned. It doesn't have to be this mana base. Um, but that being said, I think Scapeshift just on its own might be better. 
So we'll keep it at that. How did the deck gain so much life in standard? I'm trying to remember. Okay, it doesn't look like it did anything that crazy. So we, we have we have crazes in Euro. I'm gonna go with what if we played Roots? Do we still want Tamio? We're like almost the same list as that person right now, which is kinda crazy. Um Oh, I definitely don't want that few grazer to start with. I like Tamio. Do I want the fourth escape shift? I don't think I want the fourth escape shift. Is there other things that I could do to interact? Is now the question. But even if there is, do I do I even want them in the main deck? Do I even need them in the main deck? Kind of just looking through cards here. Oblivion Ring, obviously, or not Oblivion Ring, but the Oblivion Ring effects are obviously a, an opportunity that you could take. Obviously, I'm going to want Gusts in the board. Let's just put them there to think about that. With Gust on the board, it also makes you wonder, like, do you want more stuff? And to me, like, to me, like, I want something to spend my mana on, like, stuff like this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Like, Brazen Borrower makes a lot of sense. Um, I mean, I, I, I think that Brazen Borrower makes sense because it lets me spend mana and it is interaction. I actually think that I like Brazen Borrower a lot. The Tamio might be greedy and the Brazen Borrowers might be great. Like, I don't need Tamio. Okay. Let's try that. So, Brazen Borrowers out. Tamio out. We're two cards over. Might be a terrible time wipe deck. You just try like that. Okay, next thing that we want is vetoes. Let's put a couple in there. I like dispute because <coughs> people play mono blue in this format. Um. The question is, uh, do we want, like, things to pressure our opponents now? So, like, Lovestruck Beast is something that could be really, really helpful for this deck because it's a one-mana spell that can preserve your life total. I actually really love Lovestruck Beast. We're actually going to put three in there to start. Um, now we need to make sure that we have enough stuff for Ember Cleave. So we have three Gusts and two Borrowers. That's, that's some amount of stuff. Um... What did we say was the mono white is another one that we need to think about. So what does giant killer do? It's destroy target creature with power four greater or that tapping ability. That does not seem good in this deck. All right. So how does mono white win? It wins with a large creature or a lot of creatures. Let's put these in here. I might want those. I mean, we could play, we could play the, oh no, no, that's the red one that does, that's anti-white, isn't it? What is the anti-white spells? It's black and red are the enemies of white, right? So there's no way that I have one. Yeah, because it's, what is the black one? I don't remember. And Veil of Summer's banned, so we can't play that. Pretty sure Veil of Summer's banned. 
Yeah, it's banned. Banned! It's the bandist. What are the other ways that you can beat Mono White? You can play Glass Casket. That's actually a pretty cheap answer spell that's kind of a catch-all. I kind of like that. Do we need something like a Planeswalker in the board? What would we want a Planeswalker in the board for? We could, I mean, that Tamiyo could actually go on the board. That way, if we play against, like... Uh, yeah, I like Tamiyo against, like, the black decks that aren't aggressive. And against Thought Erasure decks, usually. So, now the thing that we need to think about is, like, do we have enough stuff with it for Fires of Invention decks? And so, the question becomes... Uh, I mean, what's the green one-mana spell? called? Isn't there a new green one mana like enchantment? Oh yeah, here it is. Mystical Repeal. Yeah, let's try that out. But you know what we could have in this deck instead actually of that? What's the uh... Oh, it's another one called Invocations. Oh, interventions. Yeah, we could have one of these instead. Let's try that out. Boom! That's a card. That's a cyber card for more matchups, and that's how I like to build stuff. So, um, that is going to be that deck. I will stream with this deck, uh, probably later today. And so, if the deck sucks, you'll be able to see it in the stream video. But we'll definitely try it out. And that's kind of the process that I go through uh, to, to brew a deck. Okay, well, I have played some matches now. And I have a list that I'm ready to present as kind of like what I would play. Uh, starting with this deck. After just, I played, I think, three matches. Went 3-0. So, we have three Grazer, four Gross Spiral. Uh... Four, uh, two Hydro Crisis, two Brazen Barber, four Elvish Rejuvenator, three Euro, four Teferi, one Tamiel, three Scapeshift, two Security Root, three Shadow of the Sky, and one Time Wipe. If we take a quick look, if we take a quick look at our deck composition, we have 28 lands, uh, 14 creatures, 18 non creatures. Uh, we kind of see a breakdown of the deck here. But our sideboard, we didn't actually, I think, change too much. We have the Hilliard's Light Invention still. Tamiyo, three Love Struck Beasts, two Mystical Dispute, two Dovin's Veto, three Ether Gust, one Glass Casket, and two Devout Decree. The only thing I'm considering is playing another Glass Casket oh, or even uh, an Oblivion Ring or so Effector or something like that. But overall, the deck performed really well. I added the Time Wipe over the Nissa. The Nissa was actually pretty bad. Uh, Time Wipe uh, picks up your Elvish Rejuvenators. It picks up your Brave Nism Borrowers to recast. Uh, it can pick up a Hydroid Crisis to recast. Uh, the other thing you consider is playing a Dream Trawler somewhere in the 75 uh, if you wanted to, but you really don't need that kind of closing speed in this deck because Scapeshift offers it already. Uh, other than that, the deck felt really powerful. It's definitely something that I could recommend to you to try out in Historic. Um, yeah. So thank you, everybody, so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for 1,500 people that have subscribed. If you could hit that like button, you could hit the subscribe button. It would mean the world to me. Uh, and, yeah, I plan to be streaming on this deck, so don't forget to check out the stream. And thank you, everybody, uh, for being a part of the Constructed Criticism family.